Now, what you see here is the default mode network of thought. I'm going to speak to you about the stress factors that have affected the families now. So get a parent kid connect. Uh, this is the purpose of this talk. Uh, so both parents and the kids can listen together. Slide number four. Uh, what you see on the slide number four. What you see on this slide is the default mode network of thought. How we live and how we do, how we think and how we do. Uh, so. Uh, so default mode network of thought involves how we think and do every hour. For every hour, we first start thinking and planning. That's called the executive empathic pathway, also called the top-down regulation pathway. Uh, that's how the child should be planning for studies, how an adult should be planning for work. And when we uh, think and do, we do not get into stress. We plan how we think and do. Dopamine works for salience. That is to work to focus for 40 minutes. And then we must let go, allow serotonin to walk, work for the next 10 to 15 minutes because serotonin will do a check back and see did we do it well or not. Uh, so then serotonin speaks for improvement, how better we can do it. So the top-down regulation thing can do method, what we are designed to do is initiate, navigate, successful in conclusion and reward. We do something and we get this reward motive from our own inside. We feel we are well rewarded. That's how we ought to be living and doing. Now, when we start something and don't finish, then we don't feel a good reward. And who should be rewarding us first? Ourselves. From our inside, this reward motive must come. Then uh, the uh, second thing is, if, if we don't allow serotonin to work and we are on a dopamine do-do mode this happens in addiction that is because that happens in addiction and in uh, when we are too much on the digital screen pornography gambling whatever pushes us to addiction so it may be just the in your head goes on work 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 do do mode that also gives you no sense of rest relaxation leisure how to improve because you're all the time doing, doing, doing. You must allow the serotonin to work. And often I say, if you allow your meal times to come in regularly and keep your family meal time together, all family members together, then also you get a chance to allow oxytocin, GABA, and serotonin to work for your in your brain so that your dopamine does not take over with adrenocortical uh, reflex that says do do and you feel stressed didn't do enough uh, so this is how you get into stress now i want to get you to understand two scenarios in which you tend to operate the well rewarded scenario and the badly or uh, ill rewarded scenario let's call it well rewarded scenario and the ill-rewarded scenario. Here it is, here are two people describing their lifestyles. Let me read the two scenarios to you, then you understand how stress works. Blessed is the man who trusts in the good shepherd, whose trust is the Lord. He will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream. He will not fear when the heat comes. So note the words, heat, fear, well planted, and living on your roots than on your accidents. But leaves will be green, no fear, no heat, that means no stress. Leaves will be green and will not be anxious 
in a year of drought, even when challenges come, you will not be unnecessarily anxious. You will feel your supply is always more than the demand. So in stress, the problem is if you take, take it up like a weighing scale, your supply is not enough for the demand you are facing or the demand you put into yourself or to your children. So when you are a perfectionist, you're always saying, do this, do that, and you're making, you making demands on others that becomes a demand on you to keep others doing what you demanded. So this is a common reason for domestic stress or workplace stress. So always, so when people come with this problem and when they're anxious for a long time, they become dopamine depleted, chronic fatigue syndrome comes and then depression comes because that's, that's the way you are going into hiding on the demands that you have made on yourself, but you will be blaming others that they are the cause of your depression. So follow the pathogenesis of stress. You are anxious because your demand is more than your supply of kindness, grace, ability, whatever you call it. And then when you are in that mode for some time, you are trying to fulfill the demand on a low supply and that because then dopamine does the best to fulfill your demand. Then you go on to addictive mode where dopamine one turns to dopamine two receptor. Serotonin has no time to work. Now then you begin to feel anti-reward. Life is terrible. Life is miserable. No one is listening to me. Then the endorphins get into the picture yeah? and you begin to sulk and like sulking a bitter bull toe, you are in that sulking mode and you are pleased that you are sulking, sulking, sulking and everything is wrong, everybody is wrong, government is wrong, boss is wrong, wife is wrong, husband is wrong and you are going on in this sulking mode. Uh, yes, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, I can't bring them on the my timeline. I am on a Zoom line also. Ravi, I will send you the... Dr. Ravi, I will send you the slide presentation. I am on the fourth slide. How salience of dopamine must give way to satiety of serotonin. So when you allow your one number to go properly uh, as a good shepherd design, you work, think, do intensely for 40 minutes. That's how children also should study. Then you let off to see what you did, whether it's all right, can I improve? So this question and feeling of I can improve is always there in life. And it's a safeguard for you being perfectionist because what you do today is not complete, but you can improve. So you have to teach that also to your children who are studying, you can improve. Otherwise they can go into a mode that they have done all they can. And, and now I will read the other not good mode Diminished is the man who trusts in himself, whose heart turns away. He will be like a bush in the desert. That's the description of he'll be always in stress. He will not see when prosperity comes. He begins to not see the good that is coming towards him. The right place, right time, right purpose, right person connecting. The good opportunities he seems to be missing because he's living on a past opportunity of drivenness of doing something he planned some time ago, and he's not entering into good new opportunities and pleasant places. He all the time feels uh, not enough was done, and he's castigating other people, not enough was done. Uh, you must not go there. Uh, so that place is like stony waste in the wilderness, a land of salt without inhabitant, that is depression. How well this passage describes depression. He will be like a bush in the desert. You feel you're all alone. I, I gave you the progression from anxiety and then you're overworking, demand exceeds supply. So when they come to me, I get the husband and wife to sit down together. And if, if the child comes also, because there's a lot of digital stress these days, Many complaints that children are not studying but playing online. And always I tell the parents, teach them the science, read my four books, 
mom and dad mistake management these books are available from sarasavi bookshop as well as apeksha bookshop in borella 374 serpentine road and apeksha bookshop in morotua opposite the morotua cricket stadium please read the books with your kids and don't fight the kids when they re and when you read them the science they begin to understand and they begin to cooperate with you uh, they, are, they they understand this parents are not all the time shouting at me but they are coaching me what the science is about too much of screen removes memory and recall so when too much of screen is used uh, and and then i was describing to you this uh, how the digital stress brings on stress to the whole family and you begin to feel like a bush in the desert all alone very hot and we you will not see when prosperity comes which means you always see the bad side of things not the improvement side it's always in your mind it goes on not enough not enough and you put demand on all your family members that is the scenario i get when parents contact me about a child's problem Uh, generally about digitization or whatever or many children now don't even do the o level properly because they want to go abroad uh, so parents i have to tell you if you keep criticizing your country and call it no good their children will say no good no point studying in this country send us abroad those days the cry was send us abroad after the a level then without the a level after the o level now even without doing the olevel properly kids are saying send us the no point studying in this country and who created that atmosphere at home you created parent so forgive me for being uh, direct but that's a problem i encounter all the time when parents and kids come to consult me so here is the depression state he will be like a bush in the desert all by yourself feeling very hot not see when prosperity comes always it's the bad side of things you are looking at negatives but we live in a stony waste in the wilderness you, you so that is a very lonely place it's as if you feel useless um, nothing goes right and uh, constantly the thoughts come useless that's where depression leads to uh, suicidal tendencies a land of salt without inhabitant you feel you are all alone so that's a very good uh, description of the depression and even a wasted life now we want people to recover and get to blessed is the man who trusts in the good shepherd who trusts in the good shepherd he will be like a tree planted by water extending its roots by a stream will not fear when the heat comes so when the stress come you will not go into fear you will not be revving up your adrenal cortical axis Uh, for you will be like a tree planted by water leaves will be green will not be anxious in a year of drought you feel even when outside challenges are tough you will be well provided no anxiety and you will continue to yield your fruit all the time and this passage diagnoses the problem as the heart is more deceitful desperately sick who can understand Uh, so this is not only a problem of neurochemical transmitters dopamine serotonin imbalance no time for oxytocin and communication happiness that's why i always say get uh, get into uh, keep your family meal times as a reprieve and a recovery of time leisure pleasure oxytocin speak into each other and family uh, meal times are a, a reprieve in breaking the dopamine cycle and gaba coming to work uh, i always say please take time with your kids when you come back from home 7 pm is happy family time and at the time children are falling asleep that's the time gaba is working gaba is gamma amino butyric acid so at this point i must tell you that every bit of alcohol blocks gaba that is specifically ethyl alcohol molecule blocks the gaba molecules gamma amino butyric acid Like that gaba is the thing that gives you that feeling of empathy when you are falling asleep you feel like a child and when your kids are falling asleep they want to relate to you and bring out what went wrong with them uh, what went bad at school or something terrible abusive and you get to know them 
heart to heart and recover the time that you were at work and you couldn't be with kids, you can recover very well when you give a little time when the child is falling asleep. So please, parent, please, dad, please, mom, I see all the time the problem now. Those days only working dads were stressed. Now everybody is stressed up. So we, those days clinically, we used to look at stress and depression as one person's problem. Now the clinicians have to change because we had to look up, look at the stress issue as a family problem. That's why I'm doing this talk. And uh, I'm contactable on WhatsApp. Some of you have my personal telephone number, but otherwise just send a WhatsApp to 074-211-5011. So that's that's the WhatsApp number. I will always get back to you. Uh, So please, you need to attend on this. I have now started taking consultations again. Uh, we all, every Friday evening, we also have a dinner there, Empathic Motor Therapy Center at 374 Leslie Ranagala Mahavata, 3,600 square feet of grips and ropes. If you send me your WhatsApp number, I will send you a picture or a little clip of this, how, how it works. When grips and ropes are working on your fingers like a challenge pose it looks like that we have an indoor one and we have an outdoor one then the glutamate neurochemical transmitter works on the empathic tracks and the dopamine comes down this is the digi detox method harvard calls it fit kids f-i-t-k-i-d-s we call it empathic motor therapy I have presented this seminar to SLMA in 2019. The treatise, the academic article is available on the College of General Practitioners Sri Lanka website. If you send me your WhatsApp number, I can send it to you. I'm Dr. Lalit Mendis. My last uh, official position was as head of Department of Pharmacology, Kalania Medical Faculty. I was the founding head. Now, having described you the default mode, I like to uh, take another slide. Dhananjay, can you can we go to the top down and bottom up regulation slide, the two brain tracks? So in the two brain tracks, what happens is when we think and do initiation, navigation, reward, uh, good conclusion and reward, we are thinking from the dorsolateral aspect of the prefrontal cortex. That's where I'm touching. And then we are creative, empathic, executive, good for me, good for others. And that's the decision-making process. That is how we do paninata para sita baladu. But if a child is too much on the screen, or if you are stressed with the same thing and doing your dopaminergic do-do-do, you revert to bottom-up regulation, which is why the amygdala, ventromedial aspect of the prefrontal cortex that just above your soft palate, amygdala, hippocampus, hypothalamus axis, that is called bottom-up regulation. Why why is it called bottom-up regulation? The last thing you did, last thing you did affects your present hour. Now, your last hour is pushing you, propelling you now. Now, the last hour might have been a fast digital game or a bad incident, some anger reaction. Now, the same thing can happen, not the last hour, yesterday's anger, yesterday's digital game pushing you because the amygdala survival track, bottom-up regulation is a survival track man needs that Good Shepherd also knew. It's like a foxhole for an army check. What is a foxhole? Stress so much, you go berserk. So you're Neurons begin to fire multidirectionally and you are shifting from dopamine 1 receptor, which is physiological, to dopamine 2 receptor, which is addictive. And you are not recovering. You are all, and your dreams become bad. Now, the good shepherd's gift for us is sleep. Uh, I need to add at this point. So we must allow from 6 p.m. melatonin to work through our brain. Then the bio clocks go into night mode and melatonin is working on our retina. 
the re retina has light sensitive retinal ganglion cells and through it the brain begins to start the dream weaver program and the glymphatic system working glial cells removing all our excess neurochemicals and attending on our neuronal tracts refurbishing them so to say under the supervision or under the regulation of melatonin then you come to your dream time you have uh, NREM, no dream sleep, REM, dream sleep, three to four cycles have to alternate. Initially, you see uh, bad dreams, such as, uh, such as bread becoming a loaf, becoming 700 rupees, that kind of dreams, bad dreams. But by the time three, four cycles have gone on, you wake up seeing good, good dreams. If you are waking up with bad dreams and unpleasant behavior, waking up in the morning grouchy and the child says, can't go to school, teacher is wrong, studies are bad, then you know he is too digitized. He didn't get his physiological sleep. This also can happen to an adult. And this is what happens in post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. When your old thing is playing up and in the night your sleep is disturbed. Now I have to add to that that don't use blue light, blue frequency lights, the LED lights in your bedroom or in your washroom. And don't keep looking at the screen too long after 9 p.m. Because you have to give yourself about two hours of no pixels. The pixel effect depends on how fast the programs you are watching and how, how high the PPI of your screen. So the laptop is always better than a smartphone, stab or iPad for long, long term work. For kids also for online studies, uh, you have to get a laptop rather than give them the tab and so on. I also understand while kids are on chat mode, they do different things. Uh, without, with, besides studying, they are doing different, different things. Then I want to put forward another Another proposition, man is not only brain. Now, my personal story is, I thought I'm only brain. Uh, and I got through as the first in the island, the A-level examination, long, long time ago, 1970, doing chemistry, physics, botany, zoo. I studied at St. Thomas's College, and I was first in the island in that A-level examination. At that time, I didn't believe in God. I was an atheist, so was my father. And I thought knowledge is there, that is there in everything. Uh, so in the medical faculty, every Colombo medical faculty, every exam I was matched up, including the final MBBS. But before that, some change came to me uh, because blessed is the man who does not walk in the council of ungodly counsel, standing in path of sinners, sitting in the seat of Scornful. So there are three things that operate in human, human uh, what shall I say, brain waves. There are uh, philosophies, Karl Marx, Charles Darwin, whom, we, whom I completely believe in my days of zoology. And th those philosophies have said, get as much as you can, survival of the fittest, uh, when the tough, when going gets tough, tough gets going. Uh, struggle for existence. And those are the philosophies that we personally believed at that time. Then seat of the scornful. Now the battle has shifted from science to fake science. And the battle has shifted from communist and capitalist battle to globalists and nationalists. So the world over, globalists are planning how to get at the nations and all their resources. That's the battle at present on. So little nations or big nations, no more do their resources belong to themselves. The global planners will plan different medical procedures, different medical emergencies. I hope you know what I'm talking about. In order to get at different laws, if possible health laws, to make the whole world to listen to them. Now you understand the recent phenomena and so much of a nation's resources are harness for fake science because there's a global gang 
who are planning to take over the world economy and through economy and health laws, the world politics. That's where it is going. So it is increasingly important that we, we plan our life with the good shepherd as to what he can do. Now, little more slides I like to show you. Uh, can we have the Taradhyaya Dhananjaya where I saw the show the demand and this is the Taradhyaya, the scale. If demand goes too much, our supply is not enough, we go to stress. So we, I train when husband and uh, wife come, I train them hour by hour, write down how your demand was. Right? That is, I felt neglected. I didn't have this. But please write down this I had, this help my husband gave me. So that you have a stop taking hour by hour and we have to move towards treating depression, anxiety, ADHD without drugs. Sri Lanka's problem is we are so trigger happy prescribing, we are not getting on to counseling. Uh, I have seen children as young as 10 with nine drugs prescribed for ADHD. I have written on this academically and professionally. ADHD is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. In my series of 630 children, what I found was two thirds of ADHD diagnosed is actually digitization and the effect of the digital screen. Attention deficit means shallow attention, short attention, they can't stay in one place and study. Then they say, if I listen to music, I study better. That, is, that doesn't happen. You do, once you study and listen to music, what brain records is music. If your child is able in music, if you in our empathic learning center, we train children in music, guitar, drum, flute, mouth organ, and the violin. And music behaves like two languages because there's the music and the singing. So if your child is good at it, train them to play the, and even the keyboard, but the stringed instruments give a better brain effect, the vibration, doctors listening will understand, the vibration sense is the most powerful uh, uh, effect on the brain tracks and even on the learning tracks, it's very helpful. So we use all that for digital detox and not drugs. We use all that for digital detox and not drugs. And uh, also uh, do your best to get them into empathic motor therapy works on glutamate, putting down the dopamine, as I told you, Howard calls it fit kids. More they work with their fingers and toes. So even when a little toddler is badaganama, danaganama, using fingers and toes, he's becoming brain brilliant. So American Pediatric Association prescription is please don't give the uh, please don't give the screen before the age of three. You will scramble language because when child is writing, you can see pombo goes clockwise. China goes anti-clockwise, you know, so say, uh, uh, letters are doing proprioception. That is why move, doing puzzles with fingers, building blocks with fingers, dolls with fingers, helps their language assimilation. Before the age of five, they, if you don't give them language assimilation, they best learn languages from parents and siblings. You can learn two languages with all phonemes and grammatical structure. You don't have to say this is singular, this is English, but you can learn only two. If you put the smart screen on for the children to listen to language, they will listen like parrots and talk like parrots. So of the kids that parents bring to me, uh, one third have their language scrambled because they were put on the smart screen far too early. So they don't form their language and their words. So matty molding, you know, giving clay to mold, again, fingers are used, and crawling on rough surfaces, 
is the way to go. And had a full, full uh, clip on different finger exercises to make brain smart and how to do a 12 hour, uh, 12 hour uh, timetable. Uh, so I won't dwell on it too much. Please send me a WhatsApp to 074 211 5011. Uh, please send me uh, telephone numbers of doctors whom you like them to have these clips. I will send it freely and my academic article also on uh, that ADHD is largely due to digitization. So the short attention span, how to make it longer, shallow attention span. So they listen at class or they study by themselves. They say, no, no, I know, I know. That's a common thing. And then they begin to hate normal meals because they find when they take a good rice and curry meal, if they eat fruit or vegetable, crunchy, munchy, their digitized stimulation goes up. So they say, I hate uh, fruit, I hate vegetable, and they just want to eat typically sweet stuff to keep their digital stimulation on. If you ask me what is the digital stimulation, it's both a neuronal and neurochemical behavior. I have written extensively on it, so you'll have to go to my blog also, Dr. Lalit Mendes WordPress blog, or send me a WhatsApp so that I can send you the relevant clips and academic articles if you want to study this more. I'm very keen as many doctors as possible to get to know this field and not prescribe drugs for ADHD. It doesn't help. But the empathic motor therapy, what Howard called fast uh, fit kids, I have called empathic motor therapy because empathic learning therapy was known earlier. Dr. Peter Brenning and others have described it. Empathic motor therapy is how to use grips and ropes, thrill sports, uh, to get them from peril thrill behavior in back to uh, top down regulation out of the amygdala, hypothalamus, hippocampus, bottom-up regulation. With that behavior, they have dyspathy. They are always in peril, fight, fright, flight mode. And they want to experiment with other thrills because their life behavior is sitan at the para So they have, they have, they, they want to experience. A uh, 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 daughter came, she was about 16 years old. A child of two teachers who were very conservative good teachers and the mother kept telling daughter show your arm to the doctor uh, she wouldn't then suddenly mother was insisting and she took the blouse and you know it was a long sleeve blouse she put it up and then there was a gash at least a three millimeter impression of a real gash a, a cut healed of course Three, it was about at least three inches long. Then she said very boldly, Doctor, it's like this. Uh, death is an experiment. You have to experiment and see. Of course, she missed the point that you there's nothing more to experiment and see if you die. Uh, so uh, why do they cut themselves? It is because they become, uh, with the digital game thrills, they become dopamine depleted but they want to keep the sense of thrill. And when you become dopamine depleted, you go into anti-reward motif with endorphins coming up and then they begin to feel uh, the, the pain is pleasure. They are uh, turning around, pain is pleasure. So they learn to cut themselves, then endorphins come, begin to get active and they have reverted to pain is pleasure mode. So they behave obnoxiously. They can get into sexual dangers just to prove the point that they can do what they want. Uh, so we have to stop this long before this happens. So I want to tell parents now, because you were listening to this, please don't go and scold your child. Uh, let them listen to a clip I will send you, which is, uh, there are clips I have done in very youth-friendly, teen-friendly, I call them teen tones. I call it TikTok. So you have to send me a WhatsApp and ask for a youth-friendly clip. This is mostly for family management of 
uh, stress that I did this. So by this time you would have picked up. I have more slides to do, but I think I have taken quite a bit of your time. Uh, so I will let it be. Uh, but I want to suggest to this, man is not only brain, man is also a person with a heart. Uh, so this is where my change came when I had finished my level as islands first and about to enter the medical faculty through certain circumstances, I found I could only relate with my knowledge base. I used to read encyclopedias. I have a brain that just, I read it once and it sticks in my mind for a long, long time. I can, I can put a lot of data here. That's what I live. So with my friends and so on, I would argue on any topic and turn the topic my way. However the argument goes, I win. So this was, then I began to read a book called John's Gospel because arguing with a friend. And in its eighth chapter, it has a story about a woman caught in the act of adultery like Martin Wittgenstein's Paukari, the Galgasi. And in it, she was caught and they brought him to the good shepherd saying, according to the law of our country, we must stone her to death. They were trying to trap good shepherd with the law of their country. Then he said, he that had no sin cast the first stone and the crowd dispersed. When I was reading this story only to argue with my friend with whom I was playing chess and arguing that all this rubbish and these, you know, in a scientific age who wants to believe this stuff because my head was so full of knowledge, I thought I'm omnipotent. I can defeat any argument. I know a lot of facts on many subjects. That's how I thought. Uh, so uh, at the point of reading the story, some thing came from it and just looked at me got inside me and diagnosed me and said, look, you are all the nice in your mouth. You want to have the last one with friends. You don't know whether they get, uh, whether they get hurt. hurt. Brilliant mind, you are all the time in the world. And you think these are very bloody sport, very thrilling for you, but not so good for those who have to relate to you. I got shocked because I, I did not know that such diagnoses are possible. That's how I began to understand man is not only brain, and there is a heart and a person that needs to come to know this good shepherd. If not, man works with a short fall of glory, because all have fallen short of the best they were designed for. Good godly godfather designed us for good a potential of the best we find the the best potential in us is eluding us we feel a shortfall then we become people like who climb the greasy pole you might have done Aurudu Krida and listen to Gaha someone else's shoulder we climb and we the effort of the climb makes us think we are successful but it's a stressful bit of a At that point, I realized I have to stop the struggle for my greatness and allow the Good Shepherd to come into my life and show me what he has for me. So, in the struggle of the best expectation and where you are, between the best potential and where you are, there's hurt. There's humiliation that your aspirations have failed and some people have fear, horror, some people have anger, hatred, that this, all these things because of someone else. Then hexes is an old English word which says bad things keep happening and I don't know why. So it is at that point when I said I need a good shepherd in my life and man cannot live by brain only. My suggestion is this, if you live by brain, like boils law volume, volume is inversely proportionate to pressure. Similarly, more your brain increases, more your heart shrinks. Academics know that when we get on to academic research, what we are really interested in is not patient's welfare, but our next promotion, next publication, in the points we get 
And sadly, sometimes it may involve the money we get also because of the research we do. And academic institutions can wink at academics who don't do clinical work, but bring money for the university. Now, this, this, this is what goes on in the field. But my point is a personal point. At the point, my, my brain is very flourishing. If we don't get into that, a heart warmth and a heart relationship, then we will be like that man who is in a desert place. He doesn't see the good coming. You remember that description? He behaves like a bush in a desert, isolated, all to himself, a struggle for existence, demand increasing, and he is becoming a very lonely man with a very big brain. Diminished is the man who trusts in himself, whose heart turns away from the good shepherd. He will be like a bush in the desert. He will not see when prosperity comes, but will live in a stony waste in the wilderness, a land of salt without inhabitant, all by himself, all for himself. But the other option is, blessed is the man who trusts in the good shepherd, for he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends his roots by a stream. He will not fear when the heat comes, a life without stress and with good possibilities. Leaves will be green, and you will not be anxious in a year of drought, even when challenges come, nor about, and continue to produce fruit. The best uh, the Good Shepherd always had. So please consider this option, how it is with you. Uh, thank you for listening. If you need any of my clips, please send a WhatsApp to 074-211. Also, you can download my uh, app free of charge golden nuggets is the name of the app and it is available from app store and google thank you very much thank you for listening